Hello, everybody. We are going to get started. It is great to see a group of interested people, a lot of whom have been in a few other meetings we have, most of whom have not. So if you've not been in any of our information sessions or other meetings about this project so far, welcome. This is officially our kickoff webinar for this project to share with interested individuals, artists, organizations who might want to bring their art performance uh, or program to Marcus Garvey Park over the next two summers as part of our culture, creativity, and care initiative. During this, everybody will stay muted. However, if you have a question, you're welcome to use the Q&A to put it in. There are a few times throughout the webinar that I'll be looking into the Q&A to see if there are any relevant questions to answer. I'll also be leaving time at the end. I do not expect to take a whole hour just to present the options for how to get involved. So we should have a decent amount of time for Q&A and any questions that I am not able to answer on this webinar, we will post online along with a recording of much of this webinar that'll be publicly available for people who weren't able to attend today, but would like to be involved in the project. So that was our welcome. I'm going to give you a little bit more information about Harlem Grown and the Mellon Foundation, who is the funder of this project. A little framing specifically around the Culture, Creativity, and Care Initiative, what we hope to achieve, and what we hope to fund and attract to Marcus Garvey Park. We are going to go into some details on funding opportunities. We have two open calls for programming and art for summer 2023, which is fast approaching. And we also have opened up a request for proposals for projects for 2024, whether they are visual art, performing art, or programming related. And then we will have a brief closing with time specifically for people to be able to ask any questions that weren't answered as part of the presentation. So with that, let's get started. So my name is Charles Marr. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Harlem Grown. Our mission is to inspire youth to lead healthy and ambitious lives through mentorship and hands-on education in urban farming, sustainability, and nutrition. We are at our heart both a child development and a food justice organization. And through our programming, we are not just teaching kids about, you know, healthy food, what goes into your body, and how that creates physical wellness. We also try to grow ingredients and teach recipes that are re reflective of the children that we serve and their backgrounds. We honor the histories and cultural significance of those ingredients and recipes that we're teaching that our children recognize. And we're also teaching them about the importance of the historical and indigenous food systems that created those ingredients and recipes that we can learn from as we try to build a sustainable future. And our funding partner on this project is the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. They are a massive supporter of arts and humanities. They believe that humanities and arts are essential to human understanding and human connection. And their project specifically that's funding this is called Humanities in Place, which tries to amplify stories cultures and histories in a specific location. And so for this project, the location is Marcus Garvey Park and the cultures, histories, and stories that we are trying to amplify and celebrate are those of the various Harlem communities. Now, related to that initiative, this specific project, we are going to be centering in Marcus Garvey Park. We are going to be focusing on community care and wellness, both with Harlem Grown's food-based programming, but also with cultural, visual arts, and performing arts programming, all as explorations of community care and both physical and mental wellness. Now, there's lots of ways for other organizations to get involved. Harlem Grown will be bringing our own food programming and will also be partnering with other events and organizations to bring our food programming to other events and build collaborations. However, we also have direct funding opportunities for artists, performers, and organizations, and I've broken them up here by year. 
So in our first year, summer 2023, we have two open calls. We're calling these open calls and not RFPs because we're really asking for finished, polished work. We're not commissioning anything new because of our, our timeline. This is sort of an exploration year where we're trying to attract and amplify what's already here, show people what's possible, and spark some ideas for projects to go into our request for proposals for 2024. In the next few slides, I'm going to go in a little bit more detail about those open calls and, and requests for proposals and the associated timelines, who we're looking for, and what that process looks like. But first off, I'll go over very, very briefly what makes somebody eligible. We toyed with the idea of asking if people live in Harlem specifically, but with gentrification and how much movement there is in between the boroughs and the metro area, performers and organizations do not have to be right in Harlem or Marcus Garvey Park, but they should be able to demonstrate a connection to the, the Harlem communities or to Marcus Garvey Park itself. And we're looking for a broad array of stakeholders. We are looking for individual artists. We're looking for groups of artists, collectives, performing groups. We're looking for organizations who want to put on programming or want funding support for the programming that they're already planning, as well as individuals who would like to put on programming or create art in the park. We're really looking, especially in year one, for individuals and organizations who have some experience with public engagement and public programming, because funding recipients will be the project managers and leaders of their funded projects. And we are really looking for people who not only have that connection to Harlem, but also share in the initiative themes of community care and wellness. So again, not just traditional physical well-being, also mental health, and that can extend to sort of performing arts and visual arts and cultural programming, storytelling as avenues for increasing community care and wellness. The second way to get involved is as part of our performance and cultural activation open calls. So again, this is an opportunity for funding for work this year for any type of in-person physical programming. So this could be a performance, it could be a cultural event, or it could be visual art related, but not a piece of visual art. It could be a workshop where you are teaching people how to paint, for instance. This is, again, mostly for programs that are already either in the works or would like to be expanded, because we know time-wise it would be hard to ideate new large activations from scratch in this time. But we really do want to help amplify what people are already doing and expand what people are already doing in the park, as well as bringing in new opportunities. It's really things that are ready to program that won't need a long runway. Activations for this year should be free and appropriate for, for all ages. It can have a specific target audience of one or multiple ages, but it should be appropriate for somebody from any age to be able to attend. And we also are strongly encouraging that projects activate the large art installation that we'll put, be putting in near the northeast corner of the park. But other areas are also open. I know parks is open to having activations in the amphitheater. I know the rec center is open to, to hosting programming as well as, as other parts of the park. Now, a little bit of very tactical logistical information is in this art installation that we do hope to be able to activate with lots of programming this summer. There is not any audio or technical equipment there. So if an organization or an individual wants to put on a program in that space, they will be responsible for providing or bringing those supplies. And I say that as something to think about because we will ask for people to submit submit a budget along with their proposal. And this is just something to think about when making your budget. If you are going to need you know, amplified sound that you'll need a specific permit for, and you'll need to rent equipment, that's something that you should budget for so that we, when our selection committees are, are considering your funding request, they'll know that you've thought all of those things through. And we'll know that you know the amount of funding that you're asking for is, is truly able to cover the costs of that activation. Secondly, this is just a, a reminder about doing 
programming, programming in parks in general. Parks does require spaces to be left as they are found. I and mean, there are sometimes costs associated with cleaning up or maintaining spaces after events in the parks. So if there is something where the ground might be broken or something like that, again, it should be in your budget to do any restoration. I do expect small programs this year. I don't expect any of that. But if, for example, you'd be doing an art workshop and there would be painting, there should be a plan to make sure that there is no paint left all over the grass at the end of the day. And speaking of parks, of course, you may be required or asked if you have a plan for insurance and permits. We are putting in place supports both for applying for permits as well as getting information so that individuals and groups who don't already have a liability insurance policy, don't need to purchase a separate one just for this, but you will be asked in the application whether or not you already have that or whether you would need support. And we would definitely be supporting applying for permits. We know it is sometimes a challenge knowing exactly what you're going to need to provide. And so we'll provide some logistical support just to make sure it's a smooth process with parks. Similar to the visual art open call, um, I'm going to very quickly run down what we'd ask of an individual or organization who wants to do a performance or a cultural activation. It is a little bit more in depth than the visual art because for the visual art, Harlem Grown is managing a lot of the logistics um, and the honorarium is, is mostly set with a little bit of wiggle room depending on the type of activation event here because we would like a, a variety of different types of programs. They'll all have sort of different budgets and logistics, which will all be managed by our partner grantee organization. So the beginning is very similar. We're going to ask who you are, either your personal or your organization's mission statement. And those two questions about your connection to Harlem and this project specifically will ask you about your activation, a little bit about the logistics of it. And then since the activation might not be an exact replica of a previous work that you've done. We will be asking for examples of previous work, whether it's images, description, or video documentation. We'll give the option to submit website, Instagram, and other links to be able to just give more context to our selection committees. We'll ask a little bit about your experience with public engagement and public programming, because we know we expect that there will be a range of experiences. And then, as I alluded to before, we'll ask you specifically for your budget. And then the budget template, we have a very simple one that honestly, the template is more complicated than most people will probably need, but this is available linked in the open call on our website and just gives examples of the types of budget categories that we would want to see. These may or may not align exactly with your budget and you'll be welcome to tweak the budget template to match ex exactly how you think you plan to spend money, but we wanted to make a simple tool just in case somebody wanted a little bit more direction. And then the last thing I haven't told you about with these open calls is timeline. I'm going to go over timeline, answer the, the question that's in, in the Q&A. We officially opened the, the call last week. We have a deadline of May 14th. We would really like all proposals to be submitted by then if possible. Please, though, feel free to reach out if you you're having trouble. If you are having trouble, other people might be too. It will let us know what kind of extra supports we might need to put in place to support people in, in meeting that deadline. Then we're going to spend a couple of weeks with our selection committees, scoring projects, and then having meetings to determine which group of candidates is going to be, to be receiving funding for this year. And then programming will happen starting in late June, early July and then going through September. Those are not hard and fast ends for programming dates. It could start a little sooner, especially if your organization is already planning something and are just asking for a little bit of extra money to, for significant value add on, on your programming. And it could go a little bit later in September. And I know if you're planning September events, September is a very, very busy month in Marcus Garvey Park. And then you'll see how this differs from our year two timeline. Of course, since summer is fast approaching. There's a relatively fast turnaround on this one. We have a much, much longer timeline so that we can entertain much larger projects for 2024.